Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how cortisol is synthesized. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we talk about the steps in the synthesis of cortisol, let's first remind you of the different layers that we find in the adrenal glands. So the first layer that we find in the adrenal gland is going to be the capsule. So the capsule is represented by this pink layer on this diagram, and the capsule is going to be connective tissue that surrounds the entire exterior of the adrenal gland. Now below the capsule, we have the adrenal cortex. And the adrenal cortex is made up of three layers. The first layer is the zona glomerulosa, which is represented by the blue layer on this diagram. So the zona glomerulosa is the uppermost layer of the adrenal cortex and is going to be responsible for mainly producing the mineral corticoid aldosterone. The second layer of the adrenal cortex is the zona fasciculata. The zona fasciculata is the second layer of the adrenal cortex, and it's going to be responsible for mainly producing the glucocorticoid cortisol. And then the final layer of the adrenal cortex is the zona reticularis. So the zona reticularis is the third and final layer of the adrenal cortex, and it's going to be responsible for mainly producing androgens like DHEA and androcenedione. And then the final region of the adrenal gland is going to be the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla is going to be responsible for producing epinephrine and also smaller amounts of norepinephrine. So these are all the layers of the adrenal gland. So in order to make cortisol, we need a starting material. And this starting material is cholesterol. And the cells of the zona fasciculata can get cholesterol from mainly two sources. The first source is going to be circulating LDL. So this is LDL proteins that are circulating in the blood, and these LDL proteins carry cholesterol. So what can happen is that the cells in the zona fasciculata can take up these LDLs through LDL receptor-mediated endocytosis. The second source of cholesterol is going to be from acetate. So the cells inside the zona fasciculata can form cholesterol from acetate. So acetate undergoes a number of reactions which eventually forms cholesterol. So the second source is going to be de novo synthesis of cholesterol. So out of these two sources, the most important source is going to be circulating LDL. So once we have cholesterol, what happens to it? Well, the first thing that cholesterol is going to do is it's going to move into the mitochondria, where the cholesterol is going to undergo its very first reaction. So the reaction that cholesterol partakes in inside the mitochondria is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme called SCC enzyme, or side chain cleavage enzyme. So SCC enzyme catalyzes the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone. Now this reaction that the side chain cleavage enzyme catalyzes catalyzes is going to be a very important reaction, and this is because this reaction is going to be the rate determining step in the synthesis. So after pregnenolone is formed, the pregnenolone is going to move out of the mitochondria, and then it's going to move into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So once pregnenolone is in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it's going to undergo a few more reactions. So the first reaction that it can undergo is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme 3-beta-HSD. So 3-beta-HSD is going to catalyze the conversion of pregnenolone into progesterone. So once progesterone is formed in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the progesterone is then going to be converted into 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone by the enzyme 17-alpha-hydroxylase. Now the cells in the zona fasciculata also have an alternative pathway that they can use in order to form 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone. And this pathway is going to start off with pregnenolone. So inside the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, some of the pregnenolone can be converted into another molecule called 17-alpha-hydroxy pregnenolone by the enzyme 17-alpha-hydroxylase. So 17-alpha-hydroxylase can catalyze the conversion of pregnenolone into 17-alpha-hydroxy pregnenolone. The 17-alpha-hydroxy pregnenolone can then be converted into 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone by 3-beta-HSD. So there are two pathways in which 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone can be formed. So once the 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone is formed, 17-alpha-hydroxy progesterone is going to be converted into 11-deoxycortisol. 
And this reaction is catalyzed by 21 alpha hydroxylase in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So then what's going to happen is that the 11 deoxy cortisol is going to move out of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and move into the mitochondria. So once the 11 deoxy cortisol is in the mitochondria, it's going to undergo one final reaction. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme 11 beta hydroxylase. So 11 beta hydroxylase catalyzes the conversion of 11 deoxy cortisol into cortisol. So this is how the zona fasciculata forms cortisol. And as we see right here, you have some enzymes in the mitochondria and some enzymes in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. But all these enzymes are working together in order to form cortisol. So once the cortisol is formed by the cells in the zona fasciculata, the cortisol can then diffuse out of the cells and into the plasma. And it's in the blood plasma where 90% of the cortisol is going to be bound to cortisol binding globulin. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand how cortisol is synthesized and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.